All right, what the hell is a K91-2? Well, it's practically the tier 10 with a forward mounted turret rather than the back, as well as nerfed gun stats. But all the other stats are practically the same, such as camo, mobility, even the armor profile. So it's like this vehicle with a neutered gun, practically, but it's a premium tier 8. Has the engine block in the back, so less prone to engine damage if you get shot in the front and gets pinned, but hey, it's not a bad looking tank after all. Kind of a wide berth too. And all the crew members are in the turret. So there is the driver, that's commander, loader, and gunner is likely right here. So not a bad looking tank. And eh, well, if you do get pinned in the turret, then at least one crew member will be killed. So it's Russian, it's cramped, everybody fits in the turret. So if you get pinned, somebody's dead or the gun's damaged or Amorax damaged. But that's a Dushka for Coax. Pretty nice, but hmm. yeah, it's a flat vehicle, which is also good, but less likely to get tip over <laughs> if you're running at top speed, but more prone to artillery shells especially in the engine block in the back all right but it has comparable mobility to a t44 100 and that vehicle is one of the fastest in terms of mobility or nimbleness of a medium tank at tier 8 so this is rather fast of a medium tank even though the top speed is not that good well it's okay but it's not crazy so it has only 55 kilometers per hour top speed but goes up to 60 with a turbocharger. So let's take a look at the stats then. That's a 100 millimeter. They nerfed the stats obviously from the tier nine. So not as much pin, not as much alpha. DPM also, accuracy, aim time, all shifted downwards, but it's a premium. So has to make up for that or has to get nerfed for that. But crew of four fits all the Russian medium tanks. So pretty decent. Let's take a look at the firepower first. So 112 millimeters of pin, it's APCR. It's all right. Shell velocity is about 1,100 meters per second, only 250 alpha. That's kind of low. Well, then again, it's comparable to the other 100 millimeters of Russian gun origins at tier eight. So the gun design is like the tier 10's gun. It's not like a derpy, T-54 prototypes 100mm, right? It's like the tier 10's 100mm, but it has only 215 millimeters of pen and 250 alpha for some reason. I mean, it's not like this gun right here, a lot like this gun right here. Those are 100mm, but they don't have the advanced muzzle brake or the design of the tier 10. So, okay, I guess. But rate of fire, yeah, DPM is not bad for a tier 8 medium tank. It's about 2,100, so eh, about 7 seconds, 6.5 for the reload, which is decent enough, let's say, I guess. But 5 degrees of gun depression, 20 elevation. Yeah, okay, Russian. Fast traverse for the turret. Aim time, not bad, 2.1 seconds and 0.34 accuracy. Not sniper, uh, sniper like like the K91 at tier 10, but then again, it's okay. It's workable. It's not like 0.4. So, all right. But here are the velocity stats. So, standard shell APCR. Yeah, 1,100 meters per second. So pretty fast. Gold shell is high explosive anti tank with 290 millimeters of pen. Velocity is also not bad for high explosive anti-tank. So about 1000 meters per second. Usually it's about like 800 or 700. So relatively okay, but switching back to APCR and you can see that dispersion factors while moving is kind of below average, a little bit high, 0.18. It's okay, it's workable and you can tolerate it, but don't shoot this gun while moving. Turret traverse dispersion factors is a lot better, 0.1. So you can just shift around and move in the turret, adjusting to targets. Don't move the hull. Moving the hull will increase the bloom dramatically, but 
not as something as crazy as an artillery piece or the Grill 15 or the WZ-114 in a sense. So 0.18 is tolerable. So overall, this gun is decent enough, just below average in terms of alpha damage. But then again, I'm more used to the tier 10, so <laughs> it's a tier 8. I had to change that mindset, but overall, not a bad gun. So let's take a look at the armor. It has 1,350 health, which is about average-ish for a tier 8 medium tank, but has 140 at the front, 80 for the sides, 220 for the turret front, and 100 for the turret sides. It's practically the same as the K91 at tier 10. So this turret will throw a few shots if they're not aimed properly to the cupola or the structure supporting the cupola, but still, that's about 230 millimeters effective, which is still pretty thick for a medium tank at tier 8. And about 207, 190 for near the cupola for the commander, but there is a periscope in front, so sometimes the periscope will eat the shot. It just damaged the periscope. All right. Upper plate is 140, slow backwards, about 170 millimeters effective. Lower plate, 120, slow downwards, 165-ish. So it's a short or in terms of height vehicle. So it's pretty low to the ground and doesn't need much to find a rubble place to hide the hull. So that's good. But engine block and the front of the hull is pretty wide. So very susceptible to artillery fire. So don't get spotted, but this vehicle has good camo as well. So that's a plus. Top of the hull is only 40, so artillery shell will hurt. But I'm thinking about shot trapping from the crevice behind the gun mantlet into the upper parts of the hull roof. So you may get trolled if they are jamming a shot to like somewhere here, bouncing off the mantlet into the upper parts of the roof, which is going to suck, but eh. What can you do? So don't get spotted, but you also could do somewhat of a side scrape. Somewhat. I mean, they'll shoot right here. And it's a vertical V-shape, not a horizontal V-shape. So the hull is somewhat weird like that. And you do get pinned into the tracks. So they'll blow off the tracks and still manage to pin your vehicle if you expose your drive wheels. So don't do that. <laughs> But, uh, armor is alright when you think about it for a medium tank. It's okay. Mostly what you want is the turret front armor. And you have some hull armor to compensate as well. So, it's decent enough as a versatile medium tank. You will bounce a few unaimed shots to your turret front. And obviously you just kill them before they can reload. So that's good enough, I guess. It's a medium. It's not heavy. Mobility wise, it's about a 48 ton tank. It has about 20 horsepower per ton ratio with a turbocharger. Will reach 60 kilometers per hour top speed with the turbocharger, which you should probably already getting on this vehicle. And 23 for reverse, so pretty nimble. A hull traverse is pretty quick, so it's very comparable to the T44, as we will see coming right up. But terrain resistance. Pretty good, so it doesn't get bogged down. It's pretty fast on hard terrain, such as pavement. And dirt roads are pretty good too. So goes with the swampy grounds as well. So it is a very nimble tank. And concealment, pretty high as well. So not as good as the K91 at tier 10, but it's still pretty close. So that's not a bad camouflage ready. Just barely below the batch hat, just barely. So pretty stealthy of a medium tank. Put camouflage training and especially a camel pattern on your vehicles and it will help that dramatically. View range, eh, 380. Slightly below average, but uh, obviously you should put optics on this vehicle as well, as well as rammer along with the turbocharger, but 380 is tolerable so here are the main comparisons with premium tier 8 russian medium tanks and you can see that one of the most popular one is 
the object 27A or 274A. But this thing has the firepower, mostly because of penetration, the alpha, and the DPM. But it lacks the mobility. So it's not as fast as something like a T44-100. So, and the armor is somewhat situational for the hull. So armor is not like the same upper plate as a T54 prototype. So, but some suggest this is the best TRA premium for medium tanks. Uh, debatable, but it's not bad. It's pretty good, obviously, based on the gun. So for this gun, it has less penetration, less alpha, and less DPM, but it has better mobility. So better horsepower per ton ratio compared to the Object 274A, but not as good top speed, but better reverse. So backing out of situations about the same camo, surprisingly. Oh, okay. I mean, not as good as a camo as the STG, but those are still pretty good camos. Holy crap, all of them have good camos. What the hell? Well, not as the K91. K91 has about 18 stock-wise without the camouflage, pod, uh, camouflage patterns and the crew training, but still all of those are pretty good. Now, I'm thinking how much would I rate this vehicle? It has less view range than the 274A, a little bit better than the STG, the same as the T44-100, and horsepower is not as quick as or good as the T44-100, but it has better terrain resistance, so a quick check to see. Compare this to the T44-100, and... It has better, oh, it has worse terrain resistance. Holy crap, I didn't know that. I thought it was better. So T44-100 is still pretty nimble. It's faster than this vehicle in terms of mobility. About the same, well, slower in terms of top speed, but the same DPM. It has better pin. Just worse. Shooting while moving. Dispersion factors. And the shell cost is dramatically cheaper on the T44-100. <laughs> Alright, I mean, the same alpha, just... The T44-100, based on pinning and actually dealing damage, if all the shells pin, will make more money than this vehicle. Simply, simply because the shell cost is dramatically cheaper, but... This has better armor, quote-unquote. <laughs> Alright, so... It's like a mixture of the T44-100 and the Object 274A, in a sense. Doesn't have the Alpha, has a little bit better pen than the T44-100, but doesn't have the mobility as the T44-100. So, how much would I rate this thing? Well, it's not a bad tank. If this thing had like 320 Alpha just for the garbage pen, eh. I think it would be like a 6.5 out of 10, but it is mobile. It has decent pen, just not as good as a 274A. Mobility is not as good as a T44-100, but it's in the middle of the crossroads. So I would give it like a 6 out of 10. It's not bad. I would rate the 274A as a 7.5 out of 10. Yeah, it's mostly because of the gun. You don't need that much gold shell to make the credits with that vehicle. As for the T44-100, I would rate that vehicle as a 5.5. It got dropped a little bit in terms of ranking because of the penetration nowadays. 190 doesn't cut it anymore, so... This thing, I will still give it like a 6.25. There you go. 6.25 feels kind of fair for this vehicle. So, yeah, leave your comments below. But we have a lot of premium Russian medium tanks. And we're likely going to get more. So, no more new Russian tech tree. Because there are so many of them. God. <laughs> so, um, yeah, 6.25 feels justified. I mean, you have a lot of Russian premiums as well, so take your pick of the litter, but the best in my current arsenal is the T44-100. The only downside, the pin. Obviously, power crap, but 
hey, what the hell can you do? It does have 7 degrees of gun depression, so that's fun. I mean, it's a very fast and mobile medium tank. Just doesn't have the top speed. Top speed could be a little bit better, but horsepower per ton ratio, as you saw, terrain resistance, as you saw, very quick. So there you go, folks. That's the K91-2, so 6.25 out of 10. Not a bad vehicle, but thank you guys for watching. Yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.